Uh, the game was one storyline. What happened after the game is now getting all the coverage nationwide. Brandon Staley, the head coach, melting down under the hot, heated questions about your defense, another lead that turns into a loss, and he got really defensive. Now, the Bolts lose to Green Bay. Green Bay is in the midst of just the beginning of rebuild. The Bolts had a lead. They lost to a struggling quarterback who had lost five of his last six games, and when they were done, Jordan Love had thrown for more than 300 yards. You look at their roster, they had a bunch of no-names at wide receiver because they let all the wide receivers go with Aaron Rodgers. The no-names killed the Chargers. The Bolts are 4-6 and six on the season. They've lost their 14th game by three points or less in the Brandon Staley era. Blown leads, it's now become commonplace. And Staley just went bananas answering questions from the LA Times, Orange County Register, the Green Bay Post-Gazette, the Milwaukee Journal, about this team and why it does not play good defense. And Staley got on the podium and he peered down at those reporters and he just let them have it. You know, his comments were, I believe in myself. I believe in my defense. I believe in my system. I believe in our teaching. I believe in our players. And the end result is it's a sub-500 football team. And then he told those guys, stop asking questions. I am not giving up play calling. What we're doing is going to work. You guys are acting like we've never played any defense at all. Don't pin this loss just on the defense. We did not have one unit lose us this game. Now, to a degree, they made a lot of mistakes covering the wide receivers. That's become a Sunday-by-Sunday Sunday issue. Yesterday, it was shocking. Six dropped passes. Three of them were headed to the end zone. It changed the whole chemistry of the game. Keenan Allen dropped three, which was really stunning. Now, the first two, I think he was looking back in the sun and could not locate the ball. That being said, it's football. You're wearing a shield. you got to get the job done. Uh, Quinton Johnson dropped two, one a wide open pass over the middle, the other what could have been huge first down or game-winning touchdown down the sidelines. What's happened to him at TCU is happening to him in the NFL. You just can't trust him at this point. And Austin Eckler slipped on a on wet turf, lost the football, fumbled going in for a score, five-yard line. Justin Herbert, you talk about heroic effort to try to save the team save the season. I mean, he was under big time pass rush pressure. He had runs of seven, nine, 10, 11, 11, and 28 yards. Hmm. Justin Herbert was a leading rusher on the chargers on Sunday in green Bay, 73 yards on the ground. And these defensive backs are driving me crazy. Uh, Asante Samuel, high draft pick. Now watching this game, somebody runs a crossing route and Samuel's in coverage. And the ball goes sailing way over the receiver's head. Jordan Love just airmailed it. Samuel's jumping up and down, up and down, like, I made a play. You didn't make a damn play. The ball was <laughs> 10 feet over the receiver's head. What are you doing? Right. Next play, third and 20, pass interference. Oh, God. Bad call, cheap call. Michael Davis, who struggled first two years, played really consistent last year, struggling again all this year. He gives up a couple of big passes, then he gives up what turned out to be the game-winning touchdown when they couldn't get aligned defensively because Matt LaFleur came to the line of scrimmage with a really different look, how they spread the receivers. And the Chargers are trying to communicate as the ball's being snapped. And Michael Davis, moving along towards the sidelines, runs right into Ken Murray, the linebacker. Receiver goes right by him, catches the ball over his head. <laughs> and if it wasn't bad enough, they ain't got the whole Joey Bosa situation where he goes down in the first series. Uh, I don't know. They, as of mid-afternoon on Monday, they had yet to detail whether it was a sprained foot, a broken foot, or a list frank injury. When I first saw him go down and the fact he could not walk, I feared he had ruptured his Achilles tendon. Mm. Does not appear that happened, but he's going to be out for a chunk of time. And this raises another quandary question. He's always getting hurt. He's never playing 16 games a season. There's always chunks of time in a season in which he's gone. So, John, you're out there in left field. I'm just going to give you the piece of paper. 
You write the note. What are you telling Brandon Staley about Brandon Staley's response to losses, losses, losses? And what's the fans' perspective of this team and what they continue to do on an almost Sunday by Sunday basis. Well, do you sense that we're near the end of Brandon Staley? Because when they start getting defensive, when they start arguing with the media, when they start saying, quit asking me that question, you know, they're right near the edge. Like they're going to get pushed off the cliff any second. I mean, what do you think, Lee? I don't think the Chargers fire him in season. There has to be an evaluation if this turns out to be a non-playoff season, especially if it turns out to be a sub 500 season has to be an evaluation. Is this guy overwhelmed to be a head coach any longer? But, you know, there's a bigger picture here aside from that. John Spanos, thanks, Dad, for giving me the job. John Spanos and Tom Telesco are a combined 83 and 89 since they took over football operations 10 years ago. Have never won a playoff game in, in this chunk of time. <laughs> That's a big issue. And by the way, Dean Spanos, hope you're enjoying your Sunday up there because down here, I think a lot of people are enjoying what they're seeing right now. Yeah. Look at the Charger laundry list of head coaches those guys have hired. Offensive coordinators. The first one, Al Saunders. I was there. Second one, Dan Henning. I was there. Third one after that, Kevin Gilbride. That was a disaster. Big time. Mike McCoy. Mm -hmm. Anthony Lynn. Brandon Staley. That's six. That's six head coaches that Team Spanos has hired who are hot coordinators. Not one of them's worked out. Not one of them has ever been a head coach again. Uh, so do you think there's a problem at the top of the hierarchy with the decision-making? Oh, yeah. First family of football right now is in last place in the AFC West. Uh, That's what they call themselves. The first family of football? Hey, you forgot my brother, Mike Riley. He was another one of them, right? One of the, uh, the guys up there coaching. It, it, it's 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 stunning. Did you see the stat during the game about all the fourth quarter games they've blown since 1970? Mm -hmm. All of the games of what was it under three, maybe one score games they always lose. I mean, I remember in the 90s back when you were doing play by play, and I would religiously listen to 690 all the time. And when the Chargers would lose on Sunday. Monday was like a depression day, you know, and I'd listen to your show and all the Charger fans are complaining and bummed out. And it just, you have it up to here. And it's, it's so relieving not to be a Charger fan anymore so that I don't have to feel depressed on Mondays. Charger fans still here in San Diego. Are they watching because they're rooting for Justin Herbert or are they watching because they're hating on Dean Spanos? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think there's definitely some fans that have decided just to stick with the L.A. Chargers. You know, they're Charger people. They're still Charger people, just like Raider Nation, wherever the Raiders land, they follow them. I think we've kind of gotten over this idea of wanting, well, maybe not wanting them to lose because we hate Spanos. I mean, I guess that's still driving a lot of fans. I think we all recognize Herbert is terrific, but they're still sort of kind of the local team, right? In Southern California. And to me, it's almost like entertainment to see how they're going to screw it up every fourth <laughs> quarter, every game. It's, it's just insane. Okay. When we're done with this podcast, you are going to join us on fans forum, right? Jump into the chat box. This is topic one. Brandon Staley in over his head as head coach. Brandon Staley done. You enjoying what's happening to Spanos? Is this a problem with the Spanos family and the decision making with all the different coaches they hired who are hot coordinators and not one of them has worked out? So the fans forum box is open now. John just unlocked it. So if you're an NFL fan on our live stream, you need to be part of fans forum. Just jump on board and make a comment.